one. My name is Diane, and I'll introduce my fellows in a, in a while. Um, but first I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, of the Gadigal people and of the Eora Nation, and pay respects to the elders past and present. And thank you all for being here too. Um, <clears throat> So we're here about the Sewing Cafe, and I guess you've already heard about us. We're a social enterprise and a community development hub in Sydney's inner west, at least we hope to be. Okay, so our team, Freeba couldn't be here, but she's a sewing teacher. She has a background in um, sewing and in business. Um, Lita, her daughter, is here. She's been a student in the class, and she's also been an assistant, helping. Imogen Ross is our community builder and our with a background in teaching and designing and writing, and it's and it's running away from us. But apart from this technical di difficulty, I'll go on. My name is Diane Wanaswage, and I'm a past CCD student here, community cultural development stu uh, student, and I'm a CCD worker, and I've also been a primary school teacher. And Pilar Angon is here. Um, she's a CCD worker as well, and also an environmental educator. And we partner with TAFE Outreach, PLACE, Metro Migrant Resource Centre and St. Bridget, Bridget's Parish. And we'll explain why St. Bridget's Parish is important to us in a little while. Okay. Marrickville South not long ago. Sia felt lost, insecure and without friends. without friends because her technology doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, for, we can, we can one that, day so. her life changed forever because it started to work. Things were looking up. <coughs> St. Bridget's Parish, all sparkling there. It's going to be our saviour. What's that sound? Something smells good. And then a voice. So good to see you. It was Julie from her son's school. Julie led her into the building. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's too big. No, I think it'll look lovely. Don't worry about it. Keep cutting away. Yeah, that's fine. Their mission? To create awesome handmade goodies and share incredible stories of a warm, tasty treats. Six months, three scarves, two bags, one dress and 72 cups of tea later. Sia doesn't just want to sew, she wants to take on the world. Handmade bags for sale. Brought to you by the Sewing Cafe, finally. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> so, so Sia's story is, is of our Sewing Cafe and what somebody could potentially, um, a story from somebody who would be potentially in our Sewing Cafe. So what is our sewing cafe? You might have seen already, we've got the sewing, the laughing and the coffee. The sewing cafe is both a social enterprise and a community development hub. We work with vulnerable women from diverse cultural backgrounds. Um, we work with people who are isolated, so people who maybe they can't get out because they're stuck at home with the kids and they can't get their pram up on the bus or something like that. They might have English speaking problems. We want to empower them to become independent, more independent. We also provide an in enterprise where the general public can easily become involved at different levels. So this could be from buying a cup of coffee that is made by somebody um, who has been trained to make coffee, or it can be by donating for the en enterprise. So these things are very important that we believe in these values. We've got equality, we believe in diversity, sustainability, economic and um, environmental. Empowerment of people, we want to change, change people, the power that they have, and building our community. I worked on the other computer. The strategies, so these are the ways that we're going to embed these values in our actual structure. We've got the diverse vocational pathways. Now this includes, we, we recognise that employment comes in different ways and it's not always full-time employment and sometimes it's casual 
and sometimes you just need that work experience to help get you into the workplace. So we're creating diverse ways of getting employment. Um, we're going to do that by partnerships with community organisations and training institution, institutions such as TAFE. Um, we're networking um, with, business, <coughs> with businesses as well, so setting up internships for example. And socially, this is a way we're helping to develop women who are a little bit socially isolated and might need more opportunities to not become, not be so isolated. <coughs> we're encouraging community-run enterprises through support, and we'll be talking about that later, and community cultural development, which we'll be talking about later. So our components. It does look like a really big picture, so we've broken this down. Um, our business has got the commercial sewing classes. It's also got machine and equipment hire per hour. So you come in and you sit down on your machine for an, um, an hour, pay for that hour. Um, we have alteration services with women who have been trained through this and who will be offering their services. And a shop front of handmade products. And a cafe where we have the coffee and the food. So these are the social components. The vocational pathways that we talked about, we've got the training. In the skills that we're talking about, like sewing and the, um, the alterations, but we also have the small business skills so that they can learn how to build up their micro business by themselves. So we can learn about uh, websites so that they can set up their own web page for their shop, uh, learn how to do a market store, that sort of thing. Um, work experience and internships will help to make them more employable. Um, and so we've got employment and work placements. They'll be with our partnerships. We'll be developing those and we've got the micro business support. Community cultural development is so that we can build the community with our networks and we can also um, support cultural identities of each individual. Because having a space where people get to find support, get to come together, um, visibly actually seeing everybody's um, culture represented is going to be an important part of this social cafe. <clears throat> okay, now it's a massive project, so what we're going to do is we're going to start small. We're going to start a pilot. It's going to be at St. Bridget's Parish. At the moment, there are some sewing classes already at St. Bridget's Parish, and we're hoping to build on that. These ones are um, with our target groups already, so women who have been isolated due to English language or um, or due to having small children. <coughs> These are already set up and we're going to add to that by having a pop-up shop. Um, for example, on Wednesdays we'll have the sewing classes, we'll have an alteration service, maybe, possibly, and also we'll have the cafe. <coughs> we're hoping to start this in July. So we're continuing our sewing classes for the disadvantaged. We'll also be starting commercial classes, trialling them. And this way, as a pilot, we get to try different things that we might, um, as a business, we'll be able to see what works best for a business. So we'll be modelling all those little things in our pilot project. Um, we can hire out the machines and the teachers because we've already had requests for teachers to be um, hired out. And there's a certificate three in clothing production being developed with TAFE at the moment.